Hey everybody, before you jump into this week's Combat Sports UK podcast, I've got some exciting news for you. Do you want to look as stylish as Thomas Shelby when you train? Do you want to experience the comfort that can only be achieved by a cup of tea on a cold day? Well, good news for you guys. X Marshall has partnered with us, Combat Sports UK. They are the fastest growing brand in martial arts for a reason. They are making waves and taking practitioners with their slick, stylish and hilarious designs that are fit for a king. From rash guards to shorts, streetwear, and more, X Marshall has got you covered. X Marshall is an extremely community oriented brand, having given away over $50,000 in free gear last year alone, as well as sponsoring over 300 athletes. And if you shop using the code CSUK10 at checkout, you can get 10% off everything in store. That code again is CSUK10 at checkout. Go and check out xmarshall.com and enjoy the fight. Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Combat Sports UK MMA podcast. And I'm joined with a man with more charmer than both Jesse March and Gareth Southgate combined. That, for anyone listening, it's not very much. John, game break. Bogoslavsky, how are you, sir? Not without introduction, not good. Not well. <laughs> Should be very sharma. <laughs> Look, this says the man who keeps picking against Alex Pereira. I called it round one, and that's exactly what he did. Exactly what he did. I will not have it any other way. That's exactly what he did. I do remember uh, round two starting. I don't know what, uh, what you're talking about. Wow. But I think it's good luck. Every time I go against Pereira... He wins. So I think I should keep going, especially if uh, Uncle Ive is next. Exactly. You're the, re- you're the reason for his success. You are the That's complete reason. You are Chama. I'm, you are I'm basically, I'm Izzy. I am keeping you motivated. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Look, Yuri Brahashka didn't know it was round two. So look, let's just call it round one. Fair <laughs> enough. He did it better though, right? Look, at least I got one thing right. He did do it better than what he did in Madison Square Garden. Can we agree Very on that? True. Oh, yes. And I think so far, Pereira is probably the fighter of the year. I'm really halfway through. And there's no reason he won't fight one more time this year. Yep. If he gets another knockout, there's it's a clear-cut fight of the year for, for me, at least. I mean, I would probably throw Max Holloway your way if, if well, I mean, we don't know what's going on. I know what's going on. Ilya Tapuri is talking a lot of crap. But my opinion aside, we don't know what's going on with that fight. However, should Max Holloway get a victory? You're looking at, yeah, it's very difficult to call, but I would probably lean towards what you're saying and that and that Alex would be would be fighter of the year, even even without another fight, to be honest. The only reason, yeah, if Max Holloway gets uh he reclaims the featherweight belt, maybe I'd consider him, but the way that Yuri Yuri fought for a total of like eight minutes this year. Alex two, two, Yuri as Sorry, well, probably. Yes. But, but yeah. <laughs> Alex, Alex. I think Yuri fought for less. No, oh, probably a bit more. But Alex fought for like eight minutes total this year and, you know, knocked out um, knocked out Jamal Hill. You see the yeah. main event, retained his yeah. belt. Rematch with Yuri, you know, first for, first fight, there was a controversy. Was it a fair, fair finish or not? And then no contention. He's clearly right now, pound for pound, uh, one, two, or three up there. I think I'll consider mm-hmm. him number two for sure. Yeah. Not without seeing Jones for a year. Makachev keep doing what he's doing. So he's definitely number two. And who knows? One more fight. Probably probably will cement him fight of the year. Max I'm saying he's re- number one. I'm saying he's pound number one pound. pound for pound. Because yeah, he's more, more exciting he's more, than he's, Islam. He's more active. He's finishing yeah. people like it doesn't matter. And, you know, in a space of a year, he jumped up weight classes. How does that not make you pound for pound? Isn't pound for pound literally you the, are pound for pound, right? Doesn't matter what yep. weight. And he's proved it at two weights, even though I guess his last uh, fight at middleweight, he did lose to Adesanya. So maybe that's what tips the balance, I guess. Uh, yeah, John Jones, yeah, he's, he's the GOAT, but he's not pound for pound. You know, he's not he's not pound for pound. Let's get that way out there. But sticking with with that conversation on pound for pound, do you what do you think's next for Ferreira? Do you are you on the bandwagon that says go up to heavyweight and fight? Whoever we we don't know, or do you think there's still more work for him to do at light heavyweight? 
what are two more fights? I mean, heavyweight has to figure their stuff out first with Jones, Stipe, Aspinall, Bur- Blades, because the winner of Blades, Aspinall, is definitely fighting the winner of Jones, Stipe, if they don't retire. And that's happening in a month-ish. Mm-hmm. So, I th- and there's clear, there's still clear contenders in light heavyweight division. You have Uncle Clive, and you have still have kind of Jamal Hill. You know, we do the same thing you did with Yuri. Prove it wasn't a fluke stoppage, whatever, blaming Herb Dean that stepped in and didn't have time to reset his hands up. I think if you clear out Jamal Hill and Uncle Clive, mostly Uncle Clive because everyone's calling for a title shot for him. Once Uncle, you clear Uncle Clive, I think no clear. No debate. Move up to heavyweight. Jones, Aspinall, Blades, whoever it is, Volkov, go right ahead. Mm. I mean, from my perspective, it's a really interesting mm. intersection for Alex Pereira now, right? Because he is now literally, literally at the peak of his fame as, you know, compared to where he has been and where he possibly could go. I mean, everybody's kind of got their peaks. Do you take that risk and push him up to heavyweight while the going's good? How you work that out, I don't. The only, the only foreseeable way I can see them doing it would be undercard Madison Square Garden co-main event um, against Aspinall Blades with Jones and Stipe at the top at the top of the bill. That's the only way I can fore- foresee them doing it. And I think honestly, honestly, I think that's what you do with Alex Pereira. I think you cash in. The UFC are quite smart with stuff like this. You cash in just the way they did with Conor McGregor. The difference being that Pereira does have defenses at light heavyweight. So we can kind of, you know, parlay that a little bit better than McGregor did. And you get him right where he's at his peak. You throw him in with somebody like a Tom Aspinall and you say, hey, at least he went and did it. If worse comes to worse, he can do an Adesanya and go back down to light heavyweight and maybe defend that again. Um, and Kaliev. You know, no, no one, I don't feel like anyone's clamoring for those fights. I agree with what, what you're saying as well. Like, you should. He should have that fight. Um, but I don't think anyone's clamoring for it. And the UFC tend to go the way, especially after what he did, stepping in International Fight Week, I would, like I said, we said in the build-up, I think there's kind of, I think he must have earned himself some sway or must have had some sort of gentleman's agreement with the UFC that, hey, I do this, Madison Square Garden in November, I go to heavyweight and look at that interim, that interim belt. <sighs> I would, no, no, no. You don't want to do Aspinall dirty like that. You don't want to have defend his interim and then defend it again. I think, fine, he's already defending his interim belt uh, in terms of Aspinall. Yeah. Defend it, whatever you're doing with it. Your next fight is undisputed or get promoted to undisputed if yeah. Jones and Stipe retire. That's just the yeah. thing. I think Pereira just turned 37. He hasn't looked like he's not looking like slowing down at all. He could defend one more time let heavyweight and then next year we could see i think in 2025 we could see heavyweight Pereira. i think 2024 it's Pereira light heavyweight 2023 was uh middleweight Pereira. so <laughs> just each year it keeps going up until so he still has time no rush 37 anyways at heavyweight everybody's older there's anyways everybody's around yeah in their late 30s he's gonna be 38 he turned what 37 last week so he's gonna be 38 this time next year there's no rush. There's no rush yeah. for at heavyweight. Clear out the division. Get your third defense. Um, until you there's nobody coming up at heavyweight and let heavyweight figure their stuff out. Yeah, I mean, look there. You know, Tom Aspinall is one of those guys, and he's showing he wouldn't be bothered. You know, unlike some people, earlier <laughs> Teporia, they're not going to be too bothered about defending their belts, whether it's interim or whether it's full undisputed belt. He's not bothered. The dude wants to fight, right? So does Alex Pereira. You got two dudes who want to fight. Yes, okay, look, Aspinall's got to beat Blades. Okay, that's not a foregone conclusion, obviously. That's a very, very tough fight, which we'll build up on um, on our preview pod for, for 304. But yeah, man, I think you strike while the iron's hot. I think you let him do it, and then worse comes to worse. He's still a star when he defends a light heavyweight. But who knows? We'll, 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 we'll kind of see. I mean, from the rest of that card, was there anything else that jumped out of you that you want to talk about before we talk about Namayunas and Cortez? The card kind of wasn't didn't live up to the hype, right? Um, I mean, I gotta talk about Dan Ige stepping on three hours notice. I don't know if you guys were awake for that, but when the prelims was ending, there's rumblings like, okay, Ortega's out, but Lopez is still in. We're like, okay, how is this possible? Is there another featherweight guy 
coming up because Feather who's fighting also on the card, but is on the prelims. But prelims is ending. We only had Joe Pfeiffer, who's the feature prelim. So quite odd. Um, clearly, it was shown for both men they weren't prepared for each other. Um, Lopez slowed down towards round three, probably because of three weight cuts. He was supposed to cut to 45, <laughs> then made 155, then 165. Ige obviously was training, but you don't have a full fight camp for the same guy. Um, shout out to the third eye for Bueno Silva, where the cut was. I think it was a nasty, nasty cut. <laughs> and, uh, I thought Vegas, the commissioner, would let it keep going because they're more lenient and stuff like that. It was New York, no debate, because yeah, right away. But it, it seemed like the ref, I it was Mark Goddard or Mike Taoni, was talking to the, to the doctor, and the doctor's like, up to you, man. And I think yeah. was, ref is like, I'm not going to make a decision, doctor. You tell me if it's good or not. And just another disappointing performance by Ian Gary. Interesting you use, you use the word disappointing now. I mean, I was... First of all, um, Ige, Ige, Ige Lopez. I literally, I let out a little yelp on the airplane because I downloaded the prelims and then I was kind of watching it. I was skipping through just to watch the fights while I was on the flight. Um, and then I saw that and they kind of did it like WWE style, but they just cut to Dan Ige, just strolling through. I was like, what? but I'm not a massive fan of Dan Ige. I was like, this is super cool. And I yep. just went, whoa. And then people next to me like looked at me like, what's, what's going on? I was like, oh. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so that was super. That was super cool. Yeah, I hope the UFC do well by him. They've obviously paid him, you know. But I hope I they do they well. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I think he's a bit of an idiot because um, they kind of said. I think he went on the the MMA hour after, and he was like, "Yeah, Ryan Garcia at the Sphere or something like that." Dude, <laughs> dude, you have got a massive platform. That's the big platform you're going to have, especially after that um, on on the weekend. Say something sensible. Say something that's going to get people excited. That's not going to happen, people right? If you're Sean O'Malley, Ryan Garcia. yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not going to happen. If you're Sean O'Malley or someone like that, it's going to happen, right? Don't don't do it. Call out someone, you know. Call for a, a BMF or, or something like that. Something realistic. Yeah. But no, absolute top hats off to the guy, man. Three hours notice. That proves, unlike some people, in <laughs> Taporia, by any time, any place, uh, anywhere, uh, Danny goes one of those guys. And so is Diego Lopez because he has no. No reason to take that fight. You know, they've, they you know, or take a screwed him around with the, uh, with the weight issue. L- Lopez doesn't gain anything by taking it, but sorry, he doesn't, he does, he gains a lot. Um, he doesn't gain, what's the word? He doesn't gain, I don't know. He gains a lot. What am I talking about? He gains a lot from taking that fight, but also he doesn't have to, right? He doesn't lose anything, I guess, from not taking that fight. I think with that kind of situation, the UFC would be lenient enough to say, no, no. We've seen it before where fighters have been pulled off right at the beginning of the card and the other guy hasn't fought. He just didn't happen to have Danny Gay around the corner. So, um, yeah, get him something good. Get get him what he wants that's reasonable and, and that's doable and um, let's have it. And then Ian Gary, look, I think, you know, we talked about it in the build-up that uh, MVPs are really tough puzzle to solve. I think it proved on the night that MVP is faster than Ian Gary in the striking. Mm-hmm. You know, he looked to ch- kind of just make those strikes a little bit more. So I think Gary did what he had to do. Gary's not fussed about entertaining the fans. What I don't like about the performance is the talk that Gary was giving. And I think I've said this before about other fighters, probably Ilya Taporia. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I can tell you it's got under my skin, right? But, um, when fighters talk in the build-up, I'm going to knock you out. Uh, Izzy, I've said it about Izzy. I've said it about Izzy in the Cannoneer fight, where you talk and talk and talk. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to outstrike you, blah, blah, blah. And then you go to the grappling. Yeah, that's not cool. That's not cool. Great game plan for me and Gary, I think. Smart game plan. He almost had him finished in the first round, was it, with the rear naked choke? Rear naked choke, yeah. MVP made a mistake of not turning onto the... Yeah. The, make Gary's foot off from the body triangle to go on the mat. Yeah, yeah. and I think I think in, in fairness, he should have finished him, you know. I think, I think Gary really should have finished him there, so... It is what it is. That, that was my problem. Just quick note. That was my problem with Gary. I think he's talking a lot. He's like, this is, he's the future. That's his nickname. He's going to beat everybody. But it's two luckluster performances. Even if you consider with Neil Magny, he couldn't get the finishing touches. He finished with A-Rod. Oppressive. Yeah. He does it to A-Rod. And then he faced people who are ranked. Neil Magny. He beat him with leg kicks and did not continue fighting him on the ground. I don't know why. Jeff Neal. He's one tough guy. 
like Jeff Neal should be at least going like broke for broke, get get hit to land two or something, get an turning fight. No, they were just pushing each other against the cage. MVP, yes, the game plan is to take him down, but mo- other than the very nicky choke and like the heel hook kind of, mm. he was just laying and praying on him. To be honest, he was just like, "Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a uh, time time ground control time. I'm winning like this." But then by the end of round two, it was eight to four significant strikes for MVP. Yeah. It, there was 12 significant strikes after 10 minutes. That's barely yeah. one. There's barely one for a minute for two rounds. There's 12, yeah, there's 10 rough. minutes. There's two, like, I, that's what I'm saying. The ground control time. If MVP, you're talking mm-hmm. so much crap, catch him. If he's so much faster, show your counter strikes, show what you can do. Cause now Yes, you're staying defeated, but if I look on top of the World Tour division, JDM, Shafkot, um, can you beat those guys? I don't think so. And it's not exciting, right? It's, it's not exciting. It's not exci- you didn't, I don't think, I think the disappointing part, um, to jump on what you said, is that he, Gary doesn't come out of that fight with any excitement about what's next for him. Whereas you look at the JDM performance again, Gilbert Burns, was it, for example, yep. every Shafkot fight, you know, you're you're clutching for these guys to go and fight for the title once Leon Edwards has got rid of um forget the name Mohammed, right? So once that's done, you've got guys there that people you're want to see in the title you're... fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's actually it's actually funny. I saw a post earlier today saying um that Mohammed has only got a thousand views on the Joe Rogan podcast yeah. on YouTube. I, that's, that's horrendous. True. Anyway, Mohammed. that's and... a story for a different day, but that's bad. <laughs> Two more things. I wouldn't be excited next time they announce Gary fight, depending who. I wouldn't be really excited. And just a quick shout out to Joe Pfeiffer and uh, uh, Peyton Talbot. I think they should. Yeah, uh, Peyton uh, Talbot. Man. Talbot oh. is another. Yeah, Talbot. Oh. He didn't fight no punk. He, he, you know, he last fight he fought somebody better than he fought uh, this fight, and I think he's nineteen mm-hmm. second finish. So I think it showed his level. There'll be a good fight for him. I think he's a right, quick rising prospect, and you know, Joe Pfeiffer back in the one column, first round knockout. They kind of gave him Barrio. Barrio's not that good. It was Canadian. Um, <laughs> just kind of gave him a win, back his confidence, first round knockout. See what he does from there. International fight week. But yeah, just that's we basically covered everything there. I don't think. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, Pay 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 and Talbos. He's looking phenomenal. Um, so what we got coming up this weekend? Is another fight on the road in Denver, Colorado, I believe. Yes, yep. Rose Nami Yunis against Tracy Cortez. This was meant to be Rose Nami Yunis and Macy Barber. Macy Barber, yep. Um, but that fell off due to Macy Barber, I think, getting an injury. That would have been a really fun fight. This one, however, hmm, I'm not convinced. What What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I see it as Barber was kind of defending her position at the flyweight division because she's still young-ish. She uh, is on a roll kind of in the UC and um, she's ranked what? Number three or four. She has a six, one, two, three, four, five, six, five winning streak. And we clearly know it's um, Marianne Fariot who's going to be next after Shif- after Shevchenko and uh, yeah. And Grasso, Grasso yeah. kind of do their thing. So she kind of had to like defend her position. But I kind of like this fight as well because Tracy's now, she's in the like 14, 15 ranks of the division. So it's her chance to. Drop. And ever since she made came to the UFC, she's, she's undefeated. So it's time to pick up the competition. See where could she be at. See what where she ranks, especially with Rose not being a natural one twenty five pounder. So I kind of like this fight in terms of seeing where Tracy is in the division, where Rose is in the division, mm-hmm. and see what they could do next. Because Tracy versus Barber or Rose versus Barber next up for the winner of this will be uh wouldn't be a bad fight. Even if you throw in Aaron Blanchfield in here, someone someone get the winner of Bland well, the winner of this will get like Blanchfield and or Barber, something like that. Yeah, and Cortez was supposed to fight anyway, right? She was supposed to fight Miranda Maverick, Maverick in a yeah. week's time on yeah. the on the Apex card, right? So yeah, so she's been in camp, she's been training. 
uh, thing, oh, taking on Rose number units is a much more different yeah. prospect than um, the Maverick is. But again, it, dep- it depends what kind of Rose number units we see, and it depends how how motivated she is. Right? I don't know if she's looked. I don't think she's looked great at this at this division, especially in the Furo fight. She looked outgunned. Yeah. She looked, yeah, like she's like she suffered a little bit with the power. I think Tracy Cortez is is, is a good matchup for. Her. I don't think her hands are heavy enough or fast enough to bother Nami Yunus. And I just think Nami Yunus is a better version of what Tracy Cortez is at this point in time. You know, Cortez is still still pretty young, I believe. Anyway, so yeah, it's it, it's an interesting one, but. Props to Nami Yunus for still taking the fight, you know, considering that it is down down the rankings. Cortez at 11 and Nami Yunus at 6 when you got those girls above her. I mean, I'm surprised Jessica Andrade didn't step in. <laughs> so, you know you know what she's like. She's always, she's always jumping around. And that's a rematch as well, right? Be a third yeah, that's, fight. That, yeah. yeah, it would be a third fight. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's, uh, that's another fight between those two. So it's, yeah, it's a curious one. But to be honest, I don't see anything other than maybe a Nami Yunus points, points decision, to be fair. Yeah, same. Uh, Tracy's last, basically all her fights, all her fights came went into uh, a decision. Other than two, she went. Mm. She won one by knockout. She won by one by submission. Lost one by submission. Her very first fight, she lost by submission. And Rose doesn't have the quite power, agility, advantage she has a flyweight as she has straw weight. So I just I feel like it's gonna be another kind of yeah decision could be even a split decision it could be kind of close tracy is kind of well i don't know she did miss weight once at this this division but i don't think it's going to be a fight that we're going to be jumping off our our seats no i, I don't i don't think so either i mean is your prediction the same as mine points not you know? i'll go with tracy just to be different Ooh, but i think okay. rose has the fight iq to kind of kind of beat it so yeah, to do to do something. Um, in the co-main event, Santiago Ponzinibbio against Muslim Salakov. I feel like we've spoken about Muslim Salakov pretty recently, right? And I don't really have too much to add in terms of him. Um, I'm surprised to see Ponzinibbio still going. Like that guy seems to have been around for a while. He obviously had that uh, layoff with that his blood condition um, that kept him out for a long time. Which before that he was really tearing the division up. I mean, I remember one performance in particular, the Gunnar Nelson fight, where he just absolutely mm-hmm. flatlined him. Um, but since then, yeah, he's not been he's not been fantastic. He's not really been what you would say his old his old self. But you know, dude's dude's still around, thirty seven years old. He's coming off a loss to Kevin Holland and a win against Alex Morono. Before that, two losses: Pereira, uh, Michelle Pereira, and Jeff Neal. So he's been fighting legit guys, isn't he? Yeah, he's been fighting legit. He, but he's been more fighting like fun fights. Like we know how I feel about Morono, so I don't think he's like <laughs> he should have done what he, he should have done against him. It was also a short notice fight. I don't remember who pulled down and who jumped in, but it was a short notice fight. He's been fighting people. I think he's just a good stand up guy. It's gonna be a fun fight ish, um, depending who you uh, you uh, you put him with. But this is kind of an old man's fight. Salkov is 40 years old. Santi- yeah. Santiago is uh, 37. It's really like uh, just to add for a hoping for a fight at night type thing in the co-main. So people in front of a crowd. So maybe they might go wild for this. If Salkov keeps it standing and uh, Ponzinibbio keeps it standing and see uh, if they could go blow for blow. If they can make it entertaining for the fans. But this doesn't do anything for the welterweight division if this no. fight is even scheduled welterweight yeah so it says it is, 170 yeah, yeah 170 so i don't know if they would have moved it up to 185 i don't know because they're two old people <laughs> but <laughs> they're older right so i don't know salikov was signed was he signed as a contender series and are you kind of trying to fast track him mm-hmm. to the yeah they try, they try to fast track him to the no salikov's been in for a while but he's just 40 years old. It's just an old man fight. I'm repeating my points. It's just saying this fight is just going to be fight of the night or bust. Fight of the night or bust. That being said, where are you going? What's your prediction for it? I will go with uh, Ponzinibbio decision. Okay. In a fight of the night, or is it going to be bust? I have a feeling it's going to be a bust. <laughs> 
I'm actually I'm actually gonna go with a Ponzinibbio finish. Okay. Second round. Second round okay. finish, I think. Strike. Not sure what, but strike. Um next is a man trying to get back on his own hype train after getting mm-hmm. derailed by uh, Nicholas Dalby. Uh Gabriel Bonfin and Ange Lusa. Quite an interesting fight. Again, a, a, a welterweight Bonfim was super exciting until he until he ran into um, to Nicolas Dalby in his in his home country of Brazil um, last year. You know he's got good wins in the UFC. Trevor Giles, um, Anil Aziz. When he looked really good, finishes in the first round. Same in the contender series, and then he just kind of came unstuck. Um, and Lusa coming coming out of Switzerland. He's kind of one of those, isn't he? He's, he's doing okay in the UFC so far. You know, two wins and a, and a loss. Last time out against Reese, Reese McKee. You know, a, a favorite from from Combat Sports UK, old Reese McKee there. So this, honestly, I, th- I do think it does have the the recipe to be an interesting fight if Angelusa can kind of survive that initial barrage from Bob Fiem. Yeah, I think Dalby was just probably a weird, um, bad matchup for Bonafim. Maybe a lot of pressure, Brazil, blah, 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 the excuses. So I think I want to see Bob, Gabriel Bonafim back on the winning column, back on his winning ways. What I saw at Contender Series in his first fights in the UFC with first round finishes. And I'm not impressed with Angelusa because uh, he was trying to find a way out against Brian Battle in his last fight. And we all yeah. know. The viral moment for that. I was hoping they would do battle versus Lusa just to end that conversation, but I like how they moved on. So I'm hoping for Brian Battle to be closer to the rankings type of fight. Um, and in terms of this fight, I think Bonafim just got to do what he what he does. He did take a long layoff. His last fight in Brazil of what year was that? 2023. So it was almost a year. It'll be almost a year. He fought. He fought in mm-hmm. November 2023. Yeah, so he's t- it, it is a long layoff. It's almost seven months. So let's see how he recuperated. He did a long break. He's fighting in front of a crowd again, so may- not in his hometown against a guy who's not local. So they won't be particularly booing him. So let's see how it conf- his confidence is brought up in this fight, and let's see if he can come back to his winning ways of first round finishes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that's how it's going to go. I think, I think Bomb Team's going to, he's been smart to take that, take that little time out, get back to the training room, kind of work on some things. But I think he'll steam through and lose. I'm predicting a first round Bomb Team finish by however he likes, really. Yeah, I'm predicting a first round submission for Bonafi. I think Lisa is a little, uh, I don't know. Is there, he's, kind, he's odd for me. He's odd, especially after the Brian battle. He seems like he's a quitter. That's what I meant to say. So, mm, Bonafim, yeah. first round submission. On theme first round submission. And next up on the main card, Cody Brundage against Abdul Razak Al Hassan. These two guys have got one thing in common, and that is that they mm-hmm. both just lost the big hype train. Cody Brundage to Bo Nickel, Abdul Razak Al Hassan to Joe Pfeiffer. So, this is kind of like the clash of the. Um, of the underdogs, I guess, right? <laughs> like these, these this, two guys kind of. Go on. It's the clash of the patent stats records. <laughs> <laughs> just to get a win for Piper and just get a win for Bo Nickel. Yeah, that's what this is. That's what this is. You know, I, a chance for these guys to kind of get back, um, back in the groove, so to speak. Cal, uh, Cody Brundage is one of those guys who's kind of been around for a little while, goes in and out of performances. You know he can he can lose quite dramatically and he can win quite dramatically. So he's he's kind of one of those types of guys, really a bit of a battler as well. Um, Abdul Razak Al Hassan, yeah, you know, he's got a loss to Joaquin Buckley on there as well. Wins against Alessio De Churchio. Um but after that, you know, three losses. He's even got one to Nico Price on his record. Going back to the Woodley versus Till card, and missing that just shows weight how, twice. How long this guy? Yeah, missing weight twice. Chaos Williams and and Laziz. Um so yeah, kind of a mid card filler, like you said, padded record filler as well for some other guys. Um, but could be an interesting fight if both, if both these guys are hanging on maybe to uh, to another contract or or something like that, you know. Yeah, I think the problem is they stacked up two ninety eight, two ninety nine, and three hundred too much that they yep. they didn't spread out the next few fights later. So 
it is very low star level names yeah fighting other than like rose and maybe santiago if you're like argentinian or i don't know if you're latin american you like want to hear that but yeah i don't this kind of seems like a wrestler versus striker type matchup with uh abdul being the striker and cody as the the wrestler i just think someone has to just take this opportunity as to get a w in your in your record Record. and then probably call out the guy you lost to either Bo Nickel or Joe Piper but like hey that was a fluke you know because they kind of both struggled quote unquote because uh, Bo Nickel did take him to the second round uh, yep. Cody to the second round and Piper took it took three rounds for Piper to figure out Abdul so I would do that if I was them I'll get the win be like yo try to beat me one round or something like that just to get a rematch or just to get hype behind your name and maybe get another fight real quick in a few months. Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, no, I know, but <laughs> it's just something to keep your keep keep them uh, relevant. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um this I know we're a little bit strapped for time. So is there anything else you want to touch on for the remainder of this card including freedoms? Obviously you've got your fellow Canadian and Jesse Marsh fan, Jasmine Jazz the Vicious. On the uh, on the prelims as well, I like her a lot, man. I think she's she's pretty yeah. exciting. Well, I saw her live at two ninety seven where she just beat up the woman zombie, whatever her what's her name again. The woman uh, zombie. That's her the nickname. Woman the, zombie. Uh, um, brilliant. The Brazilian. <laughs> Not uh, Fernandez, no. Ah, Priscilla Cachoeira. That, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah Priscilla yeah. Cachoeira. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so she, I'm very impressed with her. I think she keep going on the keep going on her streak. Hopefully, she could keep rising up um, the rankings and, and at least be right behind um, Gillian Robertson, who we saw last mm-hmm. week as well. Who got a good or two weeks ago now got a finish. Um, I just want to give a shout out Drew Dober. Drew Dober to John Silva. Silva's coming in short notice. He missed weight. I won 45 against Charles Jordan two weeks ago. So see yeah. how he does now. He's also a fighting nerd versus Drew Dober. So this should be a this should be actually the fun fight of the card. Yeah. And uh, Christian Rodriguez, who derails the hype trains of uh, <laughs> the derail of hype train, gave him a low level, low name level star though. Or Julian Rosa, who's been in the UC for for a solid minute. See if he keep going. He's fighting again, one forty five. So he's not um, doesn't miss weight. Hopefully. And. Joshua Van, that's the guy. That you guys gotta look out for him at one twenty-five. Yeah. Joshua Van is a destroyer. He, they were so confident in him. He was supposed to fight either Perez or Ty, Ty or Tyra. Um, so I think this I mean, it sucks that he's not in the main of main card. Would instead of like Cody Brandridge, Cody Brandridge and uh, Abdul Alassan, I would have put them in instead of um. Instead of that, I mean, card, but I think those are the fighters you should look out, look out for. Yeah, that, that fight is fire, man. Joshua Van Charles Johnson, oof, that's a really, really fun fight. And you never know, sometimes fight week they do change around the order and, and things tend to uh, appear differently as they are advertised on Tapology. Um, so Joshua Van could be hopefully jumping into that main card slot. I think that's that's definitely where, where he deserves to be. Um, well, listen, man. Any anything else on your mind before we uh, before we get on out of here? I'm bringing on UC three o four. Bring it on, indeed. Especially for you guys, as well as it's normal normal time zone for you. Sucky time zone for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel bad. Do? I feel bad for fighters, especially they stacked up with all the English fighters, um, Aspinall, Mokaev, Patty, and. They're going to be fighting around, what is it, for 3 a.m. for you guys? Like, in the main card at that yeah, point? Yeah, well, main, main card will start at 3 a.m., yeah. So, by the time they're on, let's say Aspinall, that's going to be two hours later. It's going to be 5 a.m. You're basically going to have to adjust your time as if you're actually flying to Vegas or whatever in our time yeah. zone. It's, it's, it's quite, it's a bit odd, but I can't complain. It's it's in my time, it's in my time zone. It's prime. I think <laughs> there's more pay-per-view sales in America. That's why. But, um... Yeah, yeah. Just bring on UC three or four. That's 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 what I'm looking forward to now. I think we just gotta get over this this hump. We didn't have UC last week. We have a 
apex level type fight. Uh, yeah, and, and unfortunately, next uh, next weekend doesn't get any better. Yeah, it's not better. Jandy so. Rober and Lemos in the in the main events are. Listen, the next episode you see from us will be a much extended preview for three hundred four. I don't know if we're going to touch too much on uh, Jandy Rober and Lemos. It might just you know slide over that a little bit, and there might be a couple of things that jump out on 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 that card that we want to discuss. But um, it'll definitely be a three hundred four mega preview, obviously. It's a Brit stacked card, so we'll have a lot to talk about with with that preview. In the meantime, my friend, Chama, thank you very much for your time, Chama. buddy. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, we'll jump on with like three head spinning knockouts for this card or something. And then let's we get go. to preview the <laughs> Chama. Let's hope the uh let's hope the Denver crowd bring it. Sometimes sometimes they do. You never know. Sometimes these turn up. Listen, oh, man. Also- not to mention, just a quick second, they're fighting at altitude, so Denver is a, is a high altitude place. So let's see, maybe some people are a little less oxygen in their heads, so we might actually get some more knockouts than we predicted. Yeah, there are no heavyweight fights on this card anyway, right? Yeah, there we go. That's how you know. <laughs> no one's going to be slogging. Right, man, thanks very much. Take care. Take care, man. Cheers.